You want proof that Putin's Ukraine war is a disaster? Ask a hundred thousand dead Russians. A sad milestone has been reached in Ukraine. One hundred thousand dead. On Thursday evening, Ukrainian officials announced that the Kremlin may have reached the grim 100,000 dead milestone. An image marking the number of Russian soldiers who were believed to have lost their lives in the senseless war in Ukraine was projected along the side of the Renatsky National Library in the capital of Kyiv. The image was shared across social media by Kirillo Tomashenko, the deputy head of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's office. The situation with light has improved in Kyiv. Dmyshenko wrote in a telegram post accompanying the photo, according to an English translation. The announcement came just a day after Zelensky had traveled to Washington to address a joint session of Congress. Upwards of 660 Russian troops may have been killed that same day. Though unconfirmed by Western officials, it would be especially noteworthy as it nearly doubles the number of U.S. servicemen killed in the decade-long war in Vietnam, and nearly eight times as high as the number of Soviet soldiers killed in Moscow's 10-year-long adventure in Afghanistan. Now, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine has also estimated that Russia has lost around 3,000 tanks and approximately 6,000 other armored vehicles since it launched its unprovoked invasion in late February. Russia has not confirmed the losses, but the Kremlin has not released any figures on its losses. Last month, General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, had told attendees at the Economic Club of New York that he believed both sides in the terrible conflict had seen casualties surpass 100,000, including dead and wounded. You're looking at well over 100,000 Russian soldiers killed and wounded, Milley explained. The same thing probably on the Ukrainian side. The Pentagon has used satellite imagery, communication intercepts, social media, and on-the-ground media reports to arrive at those figures. The U.S. military chief said that the invasion also has resulted in the deaths of some 40,000 Ukrainian civilians, while it has displaced upwards of 30 million. He described it as a lot of human suffering. Russian President Vladimir Putin has refused to withdraw his forces in the wake of such losses, but this week he appeared to at least acknowledge that the Kremlin's special military operation, as it had been described, was not exactly going as planned. For the first time this week, Putin used the word war to describe the conflict and has said that he'd like to see it come to an end. Our goal is not to spin this flywheel of a military conflict, but on the contrary, to end this war. Putin said during a news conference Thursday. This is what we're striving for. Putin's use of war was quickly met with criticism from supporters of those who have been prosecuted for previously using the term to describe the situation in Ukraine. Alexei Goronov was sentenced to seven years for calling the war a war at a meeting at the Council of Deputies. Georgi Alborov, an ally of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, said in a tweet. Vladimir Putin today also publicly called the war a war at his workplace. So either release Gornov or put Putin in jail for seven years. It was also earlier this month that Putin said the special military operation was taking longer than expected. It would seem that the Russian leader is hoping for a way out of the conflict while not actually losing. Russia could stop its aggression, but you can speed up our victory. Zelensky told American lawmakers on Wednesday night and added, Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Though some Republican lawmakers have called for an end of aid to Ukraine, it seems with a little more U.S. support, Kiev could achieve victory.